So, hello everyone. Today I will start uh, with uh, uh, a manager's perspective, as, I, as, as you have already uh, guessed. Uh, what is important when we develop applications is to, uh, is to stock with the potential of future users. And then these future users, users are not necessarily technical. So we are here in the, in the particular case of temporal database, try to discuss with a manager, the director of the studies at the ULB, the director of the financial department, which kind of temporality he or she would need at, uh, in his application. So for the moment, we are only uh, taking into account uh, his or her requirements for today and, uh, the pro uh, and then, uh, when we have fixed these requirements, then we can uh, imagine how do we implement this uh, according to the database management system at hand. Uh, as we have discussed uh, last time, uh, uh, a, a traditional SQL database is not good at uh, doing temporal joins, temporal projection, etc. I show this code for the temporal join, uh, so I saw this code for the temporal projection. So all this SQL code is very inefficient. Uh, and then we need to, to, after that, try to implement. Uh, so uh, as I was discussing with, with, discussing with some, of the, some of you uh, during, the elect, during the break last time, uh, so this is the idea, the overall idea to compute a temporal projection in SQL and uh, as, a, as a you, this is the conceptual view, this is the fully SQL query complete for doing that, uh, but the idea is that you have to bet on one line to get the start point of the interval, bet on another line to, to get the end point of the interval and uh, be sure that uh, each time there is uh, one line in the middle, you can find another one, another line to compete it to the right or to the left. So this is the conceptual view of the problem. But I was discussing with Philippe this the other day that this is a very inefficient query. So because you, you need to, if you have one million rows queries, you have to bet, uh, imagine optimizing this query in PostgreSQL or whatever, SQL Server, you have one million rows here times 
one million rows here times one million row here times one million row here. Forget it. Your your SQL query will take one week, and this is a, a, a completely true. One week to doing these kind of things. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, uh, when you are sure of this code, then you need to probably, most probably, transform it into a PLSQL or PGPLSQL code that does the same, but do it in a smarter way because the traditional SQL optimizer cannot optimize this. But so we have several layers. So for, we forgot for this for uh, today, we forgot all these implementation issues and now we are discussing with our manager. And then we need to discuss with him what kind of temporality he or she will need in, in this application. And then when the, we fix the requirement with the manager, then we begin to work in our uh, SQL database how to implement these queries efficiently. So, just to, to give you the context, uh, now we are talking to our manager. So we need to first decide what kind of things we need to, how, how do we model time in uh, SQL, for example. There are two or three different ways to envision time. The traditional one, the most easy, the easiest, easier one is to think time in a linear way. This is how uh, SQL and Java and all the the traditional programming languages work. Uh, we have a single timeline, but this is not enough for many requirements. Uh, in many requirements, we need to have a, a hypothetical future. So we know what happened into the past, and we have we have to de do forecasting. And forecasting, you can uh, we need to say if suppose that we have uh, this. Uh, this potential future, what will be my sales uh, given if I open the, the, uh, my next shop at that point? Or I can open my next shop at this point in, in another location, what would be the perspective sales for doing that? So you understand this idea that uh, here we have uh, the past, you cannot, part, uh, you cannot change the past, but we can forecast different possibilities and optimize uh, you do data mining or machine learning or artificial intelligence to pre to, to forecast different scenarios. Of course, so this is an hypothetical future, and uh, uh, of course this is a simple model because in, in addition this is a tree. This is a tree, and uh, as you know in computer science it's easier to manipulate trees than graphs because uh, graphs uh, have uh, some recursivity problem that is much complex to process. But of course we can see, we, I can open a shop in this location in Excel or I can open a shop in downtown in, 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 uh, near the Grand Place. But uh, probably independent of that, some of the future po possibilities some of the future scenarios can merge. So you, you get the idea, we have here uh, a graph instead of a tree. And so this is one kind of time, and this is another kind of time, periodic or cyclic time. If you go to, if you take the public transportation in Brussels, you see in every stop, uh, there is a schedule of uh, the, what three time, uh, the 71 will arrive to this, uh, to this stop. So this is cyclic time, because you know, from Monday to, uh, from mo uh, uh, every Monday for the next three months, that will be uh, the, uh, the scheduled time. So it's cyclic time in, 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 in the sense that uh, this is a recurrent process. Uh, we know how much time uh, it will take from uh, this stop to the end stop at the uh, Place de Bouquet, but somehow the, this process is not fixed in time. It's just uh, floating and then we need to instantiate it on Monday, next Monday at 6 a.m. To, to begin thinking of uh, when it will take place. So these are two different kinds of time that we need to take into account. And in particular, we have, a, as you may know, so I have already mentioned, we, have a, we had a research project with Steve, and we, will work, we, will, we, will work, we were working on their uh, scheduling. And of course, uh, we needed to, in, uh, to in, uh, uh, to uh, talk with them with this periodic kind of uh, time. Then the idea is the when, how far into the future and how far into the past uh, this uh, time can 
can go. And then, so in a very precise time, ter term, you have a date at a time in SQL Server, you have a date uh, or timestamp at that time, a date time in PostgreSQL, which is the longest time that you can in the past and longest time in the future that you can store. Any idea? The epoch, like uh, we can, the longest we can go back is zero zero epoch, all zeros, and the highest is the. Hey, this is an implementation issue, but my my manager does not understand oh. epoch. So uh, more or less, we will talk about epoch then. then but uh, basically, how much we, how much time in the past and how much in the future we can represent in Java in SQL Server, in PostgreSQL, and are those boundedness in the same time or not? Are those both the same across different languages and uh, database management systems? So indeed, there is no standard way to uh, represent time. And then uh, let's let's talk about one possible implementation in systems and even in languages, programming languages. The epoch. Do you, some, do, some, can you explain what is epoch for those that do not um, do not know yet this notion? Um, epoch is uh, they started a timer from January 1971st, and it is in milliseconds, I think. And so there are two issues here. First, uh, where is the zero? By basically, we have uh, a time represented as an integer or as a float. First, the first thing, there are, there are two systems. Uh, for example, in PostgreSQL on the, th the version 12, uh, there was the possibility to do represent uh, with a flag, a compilation flag, whether you represent uh, the time in floats or in integers. And if it is was in integers, it's in microseconds, not really, it depends from system to system. In PostgreSQL, it is in microseconds since one particular time. And in particular, this in, li in Linux time or Unix time is 1970. First January 1970, in PostgreSQL is 2000. Uh, first January 2000. So, uh, we count the internally thing is to count uh, in integral part uh, in integers mi microseconds since a, a particular reference date but nevertheless that gives us the maximum and minimum time at which we can represent in the past and in the future the, uh, with respect to the epoch uh, since we are talking about integers these integers can be positive or negative and therefore, if we say minus x, so we are counting a number of microseconds before the, the zero time, which in PostgreSQL is 2000, okay? In the same time, for example, in Linux time, and most, uh, I don't know, in Java, probably it is in, in Java the same, you have a Linux time uh, epoch in 1970, and minus would be in mi microseconds, sorry, in milliseconds. So you need to understand all these kind of things when uh, you manipulate time. And the issue is that, for example, let me try to find, uh, if I have connection, if I try to find connection here, Edurom, let me see. It depends. Let me see whether I am able to do. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Let me see, because it is interesting that you know. Who knows? So the idea is, if, for example, if you are, since you are all, you will be doing something around the PostgreSQL uh, Post and SQL Server. In SQL Server, there is a small date time. And uh, this is a normal the uh, SQL standard uh, the time, but there is also small date time. Do you have you ever heard about the 
2000 burger that happened, the idea, the a huge thing that happened in 2000. Can, do you remember, can you refer to us what is? Yeah, back in my day, you know, I lived through that actually. <laughs> in my too. <laughs> so, um, uh, because a lot of the systems were set up with uh, 19, or with only two digits for the year, 99, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty as to what would happen when the clock changed over to zero zero, uh, and so I think there was a lot of uh, like updating and maybe not panic, maybe more just like people updating but, and changing software to. But actually, we, people need to invest millions of dollars around the planet to solve the issue. That at some time uh, people thought that 2000 is very far away, so two digits will be enough. And suddenly uh, this, uh, this, this this arrived, and uh, the problem is that uh, the engineers at Microsoft have a 267 bug because their small date time. It's uh, with uh, this is what I was trying to get. If no, I still don't have connection. But if you look at the range for the small date time in SQL Server, there is something somewhere around 200. 2067 will be uh, again a new 2067 bug for all database that are using this small date time. So this is one important issue. But let's let's start in business. We think that this is normal. I mean, we don't have problem with a typical range of time and date. But what happens if you are an archaeologist? Does this uh, allow, suppose that you have to, the history of, uh, or not any, even an archaeological historian, uh, the period of time during each king of France or in England uh, were, were, were uh, at the throne. Do, do the normal daytime uh, in uh, SQL databases uh, will work? I'm not sure. What happened with the archaeologist or the physicist? that they need to do uh, clock very far away on the time uh, or very far in the far in the in the future or in the past of course this uh, how do the archaeologists work they need to do timing and then in, in addition archaeologists do need to do timing which are some imprecision bound if you do carbon uh, 14 analysis uh, you have a range of dates more or less a few millions of years here and there how do you put that into a SQL database? You cannot, so you have to put it in text. And how much you can do operations on textual dates? Imagine how difficult the life the archaeologists have for matching. And my, my, the mother, my, my former wife, mother of, mother of my daughter, she's an archaeologist working on all this, so I know very well what, what, she was, what was her problem when doing that dating. In, in, in SQL databases. Uh, then, the, the idea of the density. So we discuss about the implementation of microseconds or milliseconds as a, as a, potential, as a potential implementation of the time. But this is some high, some, uh, this is the idea of discrete, dense, or continuous. So in the, if you are saying the timeline is represented in microseconds uh, from a reference date, uh, we are saying that the timeline is isomorphic to the integers. Are you agreeing with that? Uh, or we can think the timeline will be isomorphic, isomorphic sorry, to the rational numbers when the time is in, in represented as a float number. Of course, we cannot represent uh, all the real numbers in a computer. So we will go in in a continuous line, but we will we we all know that computers cannot represent real real uh, real numbers. So they approximate. So, you know, this is a, something that you need to do, the precision. And the basic idea is that you have the <coughs> chronon. Chronon is the minimal unit that, at which you can represent uh, microsecond, milliseconds. And so this is the thing that you need to be aware, uh, the time density. Uh, T equal to it was an extension 
uh, of sequel for Temporal never is the first time uh, the time were formally introduced into databases. Alas, it didn't get into the SQL standard, but it somehow, somehow the standard model for representing time in databases. But uh, apart from that, we need other, other phenomenon. If you think of an accident, an accident is an instantaneous thing. Uh, and therefore, it's, we need to represent that at that point, at that location, latitude and longitude, there was an accident. This is whatever database for traffic management has this, this, this accident. And so we need to represent this as an instant. Uh, so suppose that you want to aggregate all the accidents uh, in the same corner here nearby uh, Rond Point de l'Etoile. It is a very dangerous uh, point in, in, in traffic. There will be a lot of accidents. But of course, if we want to aggregate this for doing some, uh, some analysis, we need to associate to this location all the accidents that were at this location. So we, we have an instant set associated to this location. Okay, for that? When you are thinking of uh, the time a person is working in a company, it's a period of time, from this time to this time. But it could be the case that uh, this person was working from this time to this time, then they get a one year leave, and then come back to the university again or for the same company. So we need set of periods, period set or temporal element. So you get the idea, we, we have different four different types on which we can instant, instant set period and uh, period set, uh, at least these four representing, associating to one information, temporal, uh, one fact, temporal information. This is one thing, but uh, at the same time, we have another temporal element that we need to discuss is the duration. When you say the uh, uh, task uh, uh, took uh, two hours and three minutes, this is a duration which is not really uh, anchored in time. It's something that we need to also, uh, and this duration can be positive or negative. So for example, you can say as soon as the electricity power went out, I have 30, seconds or 30 minutes to do all the backup before with, uh, with my power supply, okay? So this is a duration past or uh, a negative or positive interval uh, of duration. Uh, and then what, what do we have in, in SQL? We have date, we have time, uh, we have date time, uh, we have the interval for saying uh, two days and three minutes, uh, yes? Sorry, just with uh, time interval, what does it mean that it's directed? Does that mean that you know it's moving forward, not backwards? Yes, you are pushing uh, from now three minutes, uh, three hours before or three hours after. Okay, so you can only have, stupid, I don't know, whatever. You can only have two different directions for time, right? Forward in time and backwards in time? Yes, you say the, how much uh, I this three days, uh, two minutes and uh, 40 seconds. And this could be before or after. Uh, so these are all. This is all the thing we have uh, at our repertoire for doing all this temporal manipulation. This is not uh, very efficient, and as as we know, the, there is not a period that a time they, uh, that a type, uh, and therefore we need to put uh, as we did it before. You remember here, we need to put. There is no period, and so we need to put this. The start end of the start of the period and the end of the period in two different columns, and then this is the problem when doing all these uh, all these uh, intersections is because the two columns are independent. If the two columns are the same, it is easy to do intersection or union of intervals. You get the idea. Uh, so <laughs> this is uh, for the types. Uh, and now what is, what is important is that uh, we have uh, two orthogonal perspectives on how do we attach to a fact, a real world fact, temporality. 
One is called uh, valid time, one, another is called transaction time. And since the two uh, dimensions are orthogonal, we have uh, four different kinds of tables, snapshot, valid time, transaction time, or bitemporal, when you have two different dimensions associated to a single fact. This is the complex thing to, under, uh, to conceptualize, but uh, you will see that uh, when we get used, it is essential. So suppose that this is a traditional table. No temporality. Uh, suppose we have uh, faculty members in this table and they give me the title of uh, some employee which is called John. So this is a traditional snapshot. Why we call snapshot? It's just a picture at one particular moment. The state of this database, the, the state of the employees at the ULB yesterday or five years ago or even five years in the or next year. We know now that from next year who will be the professor of this course or who will be hiring or who will be leaving. So we have a picture. Now, in the past or even in the future, according to our best guess, okay for that? So it's snapshot. What, uh, but of course the information in this snapshot table will evolve, uh, suppose, and this is, this is an example that we will use uh, for understanding the four different kinds of tables. Suppose that at the some time, John was hired as an assistant. And then he can put on his office door uh, that he was an assistant. Suppose that later on, he finished his PhD and has, was, he, he was promoted as a first assistant Retroactivity. What does it mean retroactively here in this context? Any idea? He started as the first assistant. But look at this. We are the first December, and the, the, he received a, a letter signed from the director. You have been retroactively promoted since first uh, July as first assistant. What does it concretely mean in uh, in John's pocket? So basically he have a rise retroactively, so the money he didn't receive, he will put uh, in the next check. Get, forget this idea? Mm -hmm. So we, we can have, we are, you get where we, are, where, where, where we are heading. We can have retroactive updates and proactive updates also. Look at this, so the, uh, then he was happy because in December he has a big check uh, accumulating all the money he hasn't yet received in his pocket. Later on, uh, he was a, a competition and he won, uh, he won the competition for getting the chair, a particular chair in big data management. So at this date, uh, he was uh, selected by the jury among all the other candidates to be lecturer from uh, July 89. But uh, today, March 89, he cannot, uh, he will be, in July he will be lecturer, but he cannot, he, he cannot change his plate in the, door, in the door yet because he's currently an assistant, but it is later on that he will, he will become a lecturer. Okay, with this proactive and uh, retroactive updates. So now, that means that when the state of this table will change according to which, uh, at which time we take the photo. Now let's see what are transaction time tables. So now, Conceptually, at some abstraction level, we are keeping all versions of the database. So every uh, at the beginning, the, uh, before that, the table was empty. So transaction time, we are uh, keeping the log of, of all possible modifications of the table. At the beginning, the table, suppose that uh, these are the professors in our lab. At the beginning, before I was hired, there was none. Then, uh, for some time, there were three professors. Then, uh, Todd Calders uh, were hired uh, uh, 
for some time there was a fourth professor, but this fourth professor uh, went away for another university. I need to hire my Mahmoud. Okay, you get the idea. So we have the, the evolution of the content of the table on these dimensions. Of course, we are not repeating. We have to do a smart way to store this to avoid all this redundant information. But at, at uh, some abstraction level, you can say, give me the content of the table one year ago. Of course, this, in, this, in this transaction time, we are keeping all the possible versions of the table. I know what is my version of the table now, but I cannot what update, delete, tomorrow will arrive on this day. So you know that the transaction time uh, stops now because I cannot foresee what will be the new update that will change tomorrow the, the, the table. Okay, for that? So we keep all the logs. Get this idea? And then we can go in this, uh, you can say, give me the name, uh, the title of John, add the version of the table that was valid, that, that was uh, in the database at that time. So you basically select your point and then you open a single table, uh, a traditional table. But you can uh, flow between the well, several versions of the same table. Okay, with this idea. So what if we say uh, with this, but the problem, you remember that the problem was this retroactive and proactive changes. And these retroactive and proactive changes uh, changes something which is different from the date when these changes become effective. So at this level, what happened? John was hired as an assistant. He knew at this, even if he knew before here that, uh, oh, sorry, later, that, uh, no, let's put it in this way. So he, he was, at this, at this time there, were, there, there was a retroactive modification, but it's too late, we cannot change. We only, we, we only say, I knew that at this time that uh, he was retroactively uh, uh, get up a, a higher position. So independently of the time of the real world, we are monitoring the changes in the database. And these changes of the database are independent of the changes in the real world. This is the idea, you get the idea. So uh, this is the transaction time, but now we have, of course, the changes of the real world. So forget, uh, so this is our forecast. At the beginning in the lab, there were two professors. Now there are four professors. I know that uh, next year or one uh, for PhD, I know that some PhD will finish this uh, soon. And uh, in January, I will have only these three, these three researchers and I will need to hire a new researcher. Okay, but here at this uh, perpendicular direction, I'm saying this is the real world ha as much as I know. My plan will be like this. That, that is the past, that is the, f the current uh, now, that, has, that is my, my forecast for the future. You get the idea? This is different from what happened in the database. And then, of course, we need to say, uh, Give me the state of the table at, in the past, uh, now, or in the future, at some point in the future. So we are talking about the validity. When I expect uh, to have uh, this information in the real world. And this is equivalent to say, now I can modify the future, uh, modify the past. Because uh, even if I knew that this information I was retroactively changed to assist first assistant. I can put in my CV that I was 
uh, assistant sees this date, even if I knew this information later. So here we are modeling real world, not transaction time, not database, not database update. But of course, things are complex because all the two are independent. So here in this, in this the direction, we are talking about the content of the database. And in this perpendicular direction, I my forecast to the past, to the present, and to the future. I was very optimistic at the beginning. I say at the beginning, we will be three professors for the rest of the of my career at the ULB. Later on, I say no. I will, I will need another one. There are there are there are, a, a, there are a lot more students, so I need to hire an additional professor there. So I'm changing my forecast about the future, okay? And finally, I say, no, I was too optimistic. I know that here I'm here for, but my basically the first guy that was here needs to go to another university. I need to, in the next year, I need to hire someone else. And at, look at this, how can we, how can I explain to this case, look at the difference between this and this, it's only this uh, missing researcher that is no longer, no longer there. How I can explain uh, intuitively this situation? I'm correcting the past, if you understand the idea. If this slice correspond to the past, at the beginning, at this point, I thought that there were three professors at the, uh, when the lab was started at, the, at uh, the beginning of the time. But actually, I was wrong. At the beginning, there were only two professors. So this happened continuously in archaeology or in, in history. As soon as there are new discovery, we revise our past. Uh, for example, I don't know, my former wife discovered a camel in Roman, in Belgium. A camel in Roman, in a Roman villa near, near Charlevoix. How come a camel from the desert landed in, in Belgium, in Roman Belgium? So that immediately changed all the idea of the connection between Roman Be Belgium at the Roman time uh, and uh, the Egyptians or uh, the uh, Arabic countries. So we are continuously revising the past according to new discoveries. So basically we are correcting the past. Uh, at the beginning this was how we thought it was the reality, but now we are a little bit more information, and indeed there were not three persons in the lab, but only two. So you get the idea, there are two independent dimensions, and all this is already in sequence. You can have uh, the transaction, tab transaction time tables, you have valid time tables, and we have, you have bi bi temporal tables, in, and you need to understand which dimension are you using when you are doing, you are, when you are doing a manipulation of of time in sequence, yes? So all of these tables uh, for a database, they all exist, is that correct? Or are these three different concepts that we choose how no, we you can time? No, you can define a table as a snapshot table, as a valid time table, as a t transaction time table, or a bitemporal table. Let's see, why do we need the uh, transact, I mean, from at some perspective from the user level, I know very well that I need to forecast my budget for next year. Knowing how many people I will hire, how many people will leave the company, this is valid time is easy to understand for the, for the user. You get the idea? Why do we need the transaction time? If you're being audited. Exactly. Why? Ex explain a little bit more. So if you made some choices based on decisions you knew today and um, someone's looking back and said, uh, Esteban, why did you ask for a grant this big when you only have two professors? You can sh go back and show the transaction tables to say, well, my at understanding that time, is that- I knew three. this information indeed, sorry. Uh, yeah, that, at that time you thought you had three and so that's why you did what you did. So you can always audit back 
you know, or if you're doing taxes, you can always audit back at some time period to make sense of the world in that moment the way that it was understood. So when you have a decision and you have a legal procedure in front of you, you need to prove that according to the best knowledge you have at that time, so suppose that you are here, even if uh, now we are here at that time, you did the decision, I knew that I will have, uh, th I, I have three, uh, currently three professors, and next year I will have additional one. This is the time when I asked my grant, even if I knew that I made the decision based on wrong information. Okay, for this idea, auditing is, 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 is essential in the case of uh, uh, when we develop a, a little bit of those concepts in the context of our research uh, project uh, with a French institute working in avalanches in the mountains of, uh, of uh, France. And this institute is responsible to giving uh, uh, construction permits. And they have three colors, three codes for the construction permits. Uh, being in France, of course, uh, blue, uh, white, and, and red, of course. And then blue, no, white is you, you can build whatever you want. Uh, blue is you can build provided that you provide this uh, solidity, <coughs> and security measures and red you cannot you cannot build on that uh, plot what happened suppose that you receive uh, a, a permit to to do something 20 years later a huge avalanche at this spot and then your hotel is destroyed what happened you immediately go back to the legal trial with this institute stating that why you uh, see, they, they have collection of all the avalanches in the 1900s. With less during the well, First and Second World War, of course, they have less resources to uh, uh, record all the avalanches, but more or less they have the full uh, century of avalanches. Then this uh, owner of the destroyed hotel immediately look at trial for uh, this institute and say why you didn't prevent me that there are avalanche risk at this location. He need, they need to know at this point of time when I give this permit 20 years ago, I was not in measure to forecast that there, has, there, would, there could be an avalanche at this way. So indeed, auditing is an essential aspect for uh, transaction type. Does a bi-temporal table ever have forward-looking? Like, the, the way I'm seeing it right now is that your valid timetable has both past and future. Uh, your transaction is showing changes, and your bi-temporal is kind of showing the state of the affairs, uh, the true state of affairs, looking back with all the knowledge we have today. So does a bi-temporal table ever also forecast the future or show, like, upcoming future events? You cannot for, forecast uh, when your update will arrive, but you can forecast uh, according to your best uh, knowledge today, what will be the past, what is the current present, and what will be the future. So the forecast will be on the valid time, but you cannot forecast how at which millisecond you'll arrive your next update. Okay. Yes. How do we know the type of table we are manip manipulating the SVS? Uh, we will see the exact syntax, but you can have uh, defined by temporal or valid timetable or transaction timetable. There are the specific keywords like this. We will see at the end, uh, and this is very recent, uh, kind of three or five years ago was implemented in some system, not all of them. Uh, so yes, now let's. What time is it? Uh, may, yes, maybe we can have a 10 minutes break and then start with the second part of today's lecture. Again, going back uh, to uh, so can now that you I, I, I explicitly state to you today's uh, lecture is talking to the managers. Have you can, can you consider yourself trying to explain this concept to the to the manager of the financial department here at the ULB. That's challenging, but, but he needs to know. He needs to know. Uh, Adam, you have a professional experience that you immediately get the idea that uh, auditing is, is, is essential. 
but uh, conveying this information to normal users is not, is not easy. So this is your challenge. Try to first explain the two dimensions of time and how both are different. And the next time is, uh, next, the, the next challenge is to do this kind of thing, put clocks on your U UML or relational or entity relationship diagrams and explain to the manager why do we put a clock there or not there. So again, it's easy, uh, easy to, the, you need to convey the ideas in an intuitive way to simple users. And then when you have the enough clocks in your diagram, then you go to your office and then begin to do uh, an effective uh, SQL schema coping with all these little clocks. Okay, for that, that's the topic for the second part of the lecture today.